Hey folks, I'm Gene Della Sala, president of Audioholics, and today we're here with... Hugo Rivera, vice president of marketing. How are you doing today, Gene? Hugo, I'm doing awesome. I'll tell you what, Gene, I've been getting a lot of emails of people asking about Atmos, which is really something that came out of nowhere and now it's flooding the internet. And of course, people are asking questions, so I figure we cover that topic today. Yeah, well, it's a new topic to, to, to discuss, obviously. Uh, like you said, Dolby Atmos, you know, it came on the cinema scene quietly mm -hmm. a couple of years ago. You know, you started seeing certain movies like uh, my wife and I saw Gravity. Yeah. And The Hobbit. Mm -hmm. We saw those in Atmos. So, yeah, it started out in the cinema. It was the new cool thing to try to bring people to the cinema because, you know, 3D was like a pretty big failure, in my yeah. opinion, especially for so. home theater. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 3D wasn't the big seller, so let's add more surround experience. Let's right. see if we can get more auditory uh, stimuli. spike, stimuli yeah. out of people. So yeah, basically Dolby Ammo started in the cinema and what it was um, is it gave the movie producers the ability to now add height channels. Yes. And there are some cool things about Atmos. Let's just define a couple of basics about Dolby Atmos. What's different about Dolby Atmos as opposed to traditional surround sound, whether it's True HD or DTS HD, is Dolby Atmos is an object-based audio right. system. So unlike Dolby True HD, which is fixed for 5.1 or 7.1, Atmos is completely scalable you know, for the traditional 5.1 to 7.1, all the way to 64 channels in the cinema and 32 channels in the home. And you only have to do one soundtrack in, mm -hmm. in the production, and it'll work for all speaker layouts. That's a good benefit. That is a good benefit because in the past, when the filmmakers had to make a soundtrack for a movie, they had to do a separate one for the movie right. theater, separate one for 5.1, cost mm -hmm. more money, cost yeah. more time. So the logic of Atmos makes a lot of sense. Right. How, how about, you know, when it comes to the home? Does it really work in the home the way that it works in the movie theater? Well, you know, obviously most people don't have theater-sized rooms in their house. Right. Okay, and, and even if they do, it's usually a functional room. Right. You know, they've got, it's hooked up to a kitchen or it's hooked up to something that's not just a theater room. A, a, a lot of people have it in their living room, right. to be honest. Right. You know, not everybody can dedicate a full space just to the audio system, you know? Right. So what Dolby is hoping, and basically the whole industry now, is that people will take their existing 5.1 setups, mm -hmm. or even 7.1 setups, and then they'll add these extra height channels. Okay, now that's a cool idea, because years, a couple of years ago, they were producing, they were, I'm sorry, they were promoting ProLogic 2Z, which was mm -hmm. a post-processing to add height, so it wasn't a discrete like it is in Dolby Atmos, so people maybe five or six people, to right. be honest with you. They were adding front height and front rear speakers. So now they were doing 7.1, they changed that to 9.1 or 11.1, right? right? Well, here's the issue now with Dolby Atmos is, is, uh, is proposing to people is forget about those height channels now. Now we have to have them either in the ceiling. So if it's two, if it's only two speakers, they have to be two ceiling mounted speakers in mm -hmm. the middle of the room, mm -hmm. or it has to be, if it's four, two in the front of the room and two in the back of the room. Now, that's a big pill to swallow, right? Because most right. people already wired their systems. You know, if they're doing 11.1 or 9.1, they're already set up the yeah, way they are, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I guess what Dolby try to do with the rest of the industry is come up with a compromise. And uh, they, <laughs> they came up with a speaker that basically adds a height channel to existing speakers. And that's their, that's their new solution now. And um, It sounds to me like you're throwing sound waves up in the air. Yeah, that's, I mean, they're hoping it acts like an ideal flashlight where the sound just perfectly goes up to the ceiling and then bounces right down to the listening area without scattering all over the place and being diffuse and giving you that illusion of height. I don't know. So, I mean, we got some speakers uh, here. Do you want, you probably yeah, want to... Yeah, that was my next question. What are we doing with these two speakers over here? Okay, well, SVS was kind enough to send us some of their Ultra Series mm -hmm. bookshelf speakers. These are beautiful speakers. Yeah, they're very nice. We're going to be reviewing them. So, let me, let me give you an idea of what <laughs> Dolby Atmos speaker is now. And this is true. This, I'm not making this... I can't make stuff like this up. <laughs> no. These guys are actually proposing to do this. There's your Dolby Atmos speaker. Nice. Now you got your front channel or your rear channel, and you got another set of drivers firing up 
to where where's that going here we go. well i don't know i mean it looks like we're calling the transformers or something i don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> cybertron come in <laughs> it's like we're calling for reinforcements i i don't know gene i'm not buying the physics of this it's it's star trek physics is a, it's a very thin line of Star Trek physics because what they're hoping, and, and I guess some of them put a little angle, they're hoping that the sound will come up to the ceiling, full frequencies, not just the treble, but the bass too, come up at the ceiling and then just magically bounce down to the listening area without causing any acoustical interference here. Now my problem with that is, and this is my opinion, I'm an audio guy, I care more about two channel than I care about surround to be mm -hmm. honest with you. My opinion is if you can't get the front three channels right in a surround system, left, center, right, if you compromise that to add more speakers in a room, mm -hmm. you're compromising the whole experience. So oh, okay. I have not heard an Atmos enabled speaker yet, so I can't give you the final word of whether or not it yeah, would work. Obviously. But the basic physics, even high school physics, dictates that this is really a compromise at best. Yeah, I mean, you have sound waves going on the way up, they're bouncing off, and then you have all the uh, front speakers throwing sound waves as well, so it's like... It just seems like an acoustical mess to me. Yeah. Not only that, is is most people, and we'll, we'll put the Atmos speaker down right now, we don't want to get sued by anyone here <laughs> of taking their ideas. But anyways, <laughs> uh, the problem is a lot of people, when they set up their home theaters, is they treated their rooms like this room. This room is mm -hmm. acoustically treated. Uh, you know, normally you treat the first reflection points with absorption, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. now these people that are wanting to bounce sound waves off the, <laughs> off the walls, they're gonna have to rethink their acoustical layout of the room. Well, and what about the average consumer who basically, we have a, a couple problems. Number one, the average consumer doesn't have an acoustically treated room. That's, That's true. Number one. That's true. Number two, from my understanding, the average consumer wants less speakers and not more. <laughs> it's true. And it's funny you say that now because now we're starting to see Dolby Atmos sound bars coming. <laughs> they're putting speakers all over the sound bar. And it's like, right. you know, this speaker, for example, if you put a speaker on top of it, yeah, now you use that surface. You still have one, two, you still have three more surfaces, Hugo. So, you know, when, when Atmos comes out with Atmos 2, we still have three more surfaces to add more speakers to. We can fire it in all directions. <laughs> Look like the Defiant over there in the middle of the Borg War or something like that. That I is that's it. a good point, though, because you're right. 90% of home theaters today are 5.1 or less. So for Dolby and the industry to basically say, hey, we need you to add four more, at least four more speakers to the mix, that's a tough pill to swallow, It's man. really tough. It's and really and tough. in my opinion, the reason why the Atmos push is coming so quickly and so industry-wide is it's kind of an act of desperation. I mean, the receiver market shrinking, the high-end market shrinking. Mm -hmm. So how are we gonna infuse some DNA Let's just come up with a new technology and add more speakers. Now we sell new receivers because most people already have True HD. They've mm -hmm. had it for four or five years, right? Let's sell you a new receiver. Let's sell you four more speakers, okay? Let's sell you the whole new idea of maybe relaying out a room, getting an acoustic guy to come in and optimize it for you. So it adds some value to people to want to upgrade. And I can understand that. Mm -hmm. It's exciting to upgrade. Mm -hmm. The other thing too is Dolby. They kind of they kind of got their asses handed to them with Blu-ray when Blu-ray came That's true. out, because almost every soundtrack in Blu-ray defaults to DTS HD, right? right? Mm -hmm. And DTS is pretty non non uh, significant in the cinema market. Right, you don't really right. see DTS in the cinema market. Dolby dominates there. Well, how's Dolby going to get back into the game with Blu-ray? Right. They're going to try with Atmos. Right, right. And now DTS is coming out with their own version, but it's not out yet. So the Atmos is getting its first run. They're going to be the first to market with it. They're, all the receivers are coming out now from Ankyo, Yamaha, Pioneer, Marantz. They're all Atmos ready receivers that mm -hmm. are coming out. They can't decode Atmos yet. They're going to be doing it with a firmware upgrade coming this November, right. I think, September, November sometime. Right. But there's some interesting points on that, too. You should discuss yeah. the Atmos receivers. Yeah, I mean, you need more processing power, no? You do need a lot more processing power, and that's very interesting because if you look at Ankyo's new entire receiver line, mm -hmm. all their Atmos ready receivers, they no longer have Odyssey EQ. Got and it. Odyssey is, you know, a lot of people like Odyssey. Right. Odyssey is basically a room EQ, it, it optimizes the sound and improves the fidelity, mm -hmm. it can. So now because they don't have enough processing power, like you just said, mm -hmm. they dropped it, put a very rudimentary EQ in their system because they want to be Atmos ready. And only two receiver manufacturers right now are doing it. And it's, you know, Den and Marantz are using four DSPs. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of processing power to do 
Atmos, base management, room EQ. You got a lot of stuff going on in these little boxes. These yeah. things are, you know, these things are more powerful than the computers out <laughs> that, that power our space program. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it seems to me like it will be some very interesting times over here in the coming month. Yeah. Um, I'm not exactly sure how well this will work for the average consumer. I could see people like us with an acoustically treated room benefiting from and this. And the space for more speakers. E exactly. Yeah. Honestly, in an average living room with high ceilings, perhaps a, a floor with no carpeting. I, I it's interesting you mentioned the high ceilings because, again, let's go back to yeah. our Atmos speaker. So we're calling Cybertron. We're calling Cybertron. Or we're, or we're projecting to God. <laughs> okay. We're going to play him some music. <laughs> <laughs> let's play God some music. God would love it. But here's the problem. If you do this Atmos speaker, you need a flat ceiling. You don't mm -hmm. want ceilings that are too high. Assuming the technology is even working and it's going to give you the projection of sound you want, yeah, you don't want to overscatter it. Mm -hmm. So unless you have an ideal ceiling that's flat and not too high, you're going to have to put those ceiling speakers and fire them down. Yeah. Which, honestly, if you're going to really do Atmos, I would personally prefer to do the height channels the way yes, they're meant to be. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the other problem, too, is if you look at the diagrams on Dolby's website, they basically assume all your speakers are on the floor with stands. How many people's houses have you been to where they put bookshelf speakers on the side and back channels in a living room? They don't do it, man. Mm -hmm. Most people's surround speakers are either hung on a wall or they're in drywall. Absolutely. Or they're in a ceiling already. Absolutely. So, I mean, in order to propose this Atmos speaker, like someone's going to put a surround speaker on a stand in a living room, seems idealistic at best. I'll tell you what, Gene, it wouldn't work for me personally because my living room, as you know, it's really high ceilings. There's no carpeting whatsoever. Right. Um, honestly, I would hate to to hear the sound of how everything would sound once you go ahead and crank it up, you know? It'll yeah, nice you know, and thing. that's what scares me is, is I personally think Atmos should be reserved for the really upscale theaters. I agree. I hate the fact that, that these companies now are just looking for a, a bullet point to mm -hmm. check off for consumers. You know, they go to the box stores, do you have Atmos? They're buying a surround sound sound bar, which mm -hmm. in itself is an oxymoron. How are you going to get surround sound out of a, of a single point source? And they're throwing speakers all around the cabinet. Now we're at most ready. <laughs> I mean, you see the same stuff in supplements. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just all sorts of garbage. You know, they'll go ahead and claim that, uh, oh, we're going to change your genetic makeup with this. Oh, okay. That's kind of interesting. You know, nobody knows how to go ahead and do that with a capsule, you know? Right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Never mind you need a virus to carry the payload if you really want to go ahead and change something at a genetic <laughs> level, but that's okay. You know, I guess you can it's, consume a capsule. And it's all in marketing. It's all yeah. to make you feel like you got something different. And, you know, we're not trying to diss Atmos too hard. We're just saying, you know, be reserved. Don't start firing speakers all around a cabinet just because you have free surfaces without drivers. Yeah. And uh, if you don't have the room for Atmos, then, you know, 5.1 is still good. If you do 5.1 correctly, which most people don't, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you could get a really immersive surround experience from that. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, you just got to be careful. I mean, it's, it's more important about how you set up the speakers, how you calibrate the setup. Yeah. And there is some light at the end of the tunnel too. I mean, if you do want to buy an Atmos receiver, there's nothing wrong with that. And if you do get into Atmos, your current Blu-ray player will support it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it'll be encoded on the disc and as long as you have a receiver that could decode Atmos, you're good to go. Excellent. So, awesome. I guess we'll be listening in the next couple of months. We'll get some of those Atmos speakers in and I'll do some measurements and see, you know, yeah. if we could get them to project like an ideal flashlight. Well, and this is an ideal condition over here. Yes. You know, I yeah. would love to hear those in my living room. Right. High ceilings, no yeah. carpeting. Yeah, it'll you definitely know? it'll definitely sound different, and I think that's what they're really going for more than anything is just to sound different. And mm -hmm. an Atmos-enabled speaker like this is going to sound different than a speaker without. Sure. This. Exactly. Awesome. Well, you've heard it here first, and as soon as we get some uh, equipment in, we'll let you know how it sounds. At any rate, Gene, thank you so much for the awesome education on the subject, as always. My pleasure. And we want to invite you as well to visit our website at audioholics.com for tons of more informative articles, myth-busting articles, and uh, tons of reviews. We have all the reviews in the planet. As a matter of fact, our preview articles are 
pretty much like the reviews that you see in other websites. So yeah, we try to put a lot of information in, you know, technical information, real information, not bogus marketing stuff. So absolutely. And we also invite you to go ahead and sign up to our newsletter. And by signing up to our newsletter, you get a really cool top AV uh, ebook. Can you talk about the AV ebook, Gene? Sure. Basically, we have a 2014 AV ebook for this year, and next year it'll be a 2015. And we put together basically all the equipment we reviewed the year. We pick out the ones that really stood out, whether it's performance, value, or both. And we put them in there. So if you want to know what the best Blu ray player, the best loudspeaker, subwoofer, receiver, we don't quite have the Atmos receivers in there yet, but they will be. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And don't forget, guys, to go ahead and click like uh, on the thumbs up below over here. And also let us uh, know what you think of our videos and give us some suggestions. Anyways, until next time, keep, keep listening. listening.